So, <coughs> in terms of um, different types of turbines, there's a number of variables. There's vertical axis and horizontal axis, there's upwind and downwind, and then they have different ways of controlling themselves when the wind gets above certain limits, okay? The downwind turbine is the type that we have here. The first one that we put in here um, is a downwind probe in 2.5. And so the wind comes from behind the turbine and the blades are behind the tower, okay? So it faces away from the wind. In the case of the proven, its method of controlling itself is that the blades are on springs and they can fold in and that stalls the system and it reduces the, the drag as well, it reduces the surface area and reduces the load. So, I mean, they are quite expensive, the, the two and a half kilowatt unit that we have here, the current price of that grid connected is about 19,000 and, 19 and installed. But it is rated for wind speeds right up to 150 miles an hour. And, you know, to be honest, actually the year that we bought that, we bought a car for 550 euros. A lot of people I knew the same year bought a car for 20,000 euros and I think we're still ahead. Another <coughs> system that's out there is uh, done by Yoltec. It's non-furling. It faces into the wind all the time, but it's got a centrifugal mechanism that alters the pitch of the blade. And again, it's got continuous output in, in very high wind speeds, and its spin rate is controlled at a steady 240-250 verse per minute. The, the advantage of both those systems is that they continue to run in this sector here where you're in wind speeds above sort of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 meters per second right up to ad infinitum. But that area doesn't represent an awful lot of time and you are paying a little bit extra or quite a lot extra in some cases for technology that enables the turbine to continue to run in those sort of conditions. That might make financial sense if you live in very extreme wind conditions. Um, for a lot of households, the amount of juice that they get out of this sector of the power curve might be negligible. This is a system that furls out of the wind vertically. The whole turbine just tilts up to stall itself whenever the wind gets too high and to reduce the output in that way. That's the, um, the Borne and the Whisper seem to work on that system. This is a vertical axis machine and somebody asked earlier on about vertical axis machines. So instead of spinning this way, it spins around the vertical axis this way. And uh, the theory of this is that if you've got wind that's coming from different directions, one of the things about a turbine is if the wind keeps on changing direction, the turbine has to keep moving to follow the wind. Whereas with a vertical axis machine, it actually doesn't matter which way the wind is coming from, it picks all of it up and it uses it all. Okay. The downside to it is that it, um, although it has one blade that's getting all the lift of the wind, it's got another blade going the other direction. And no matter how well they design that, there's some overhead content in that. In that, you, you know, you've got one blade working in the right direction, you've got another blade that's working in the wrong direction. But uh, this is the Ropatec, it's, it's an extremely rugged machine. Um, its downside is that it's very heavy, so if you wanted to put it on a very high tower, you wouldn't be able to do it. Normal tower height for these is about five meters off the ground. You could put it on a bigger tower, but it starts to get extremely um, expensive in terms of the tower. But it's a, it's a rugged, it's a very well made machine and it's, uh, it's maintenance free for 25 years as well. And then quite a common type of machine for domestic wind has a system where the blades fold their way out of the wind. So you've got a tail that's keeping the blades facing into the wind and it's hinged. And then when the wind gets too strong, the tail gets pushed up and the blade is allowed to fold out of the wind. And so this is an example of a Chinese one folded out of the wind. This is a machine that we had on, on our, we had here for a while, but unfortunately this machine had straight cut blades that whistled like a banshee, and I, I couldn't really recommend them if you want to <coughs> still be on talking terms with your neighbours. So there's a lot of Chinese turbines on the market that rely on this tail swinging out of the wind. There are also some very good American ones like the Burgee that rely on this, and they've got a damped system. In terms of the blade design, the pitch actually varies along the length of the blade. Normally, in at the hub, you've got an attack angle of about 30 degrees. And as you move out towards the edge of the blade, the, the, the angle of attack is sort of between 2 and 5 degrees at the tip. 
and the tip of the, the blade is going to be traveling at five, seven, eight times the speed, the speed, the speed of the wind. Um, and the inside is traveling more slowly and, and so the apparent wind along the blade is quite consistent. And normally the inside of the blade is what gets it moving initially, but once it takes off, a lot of the work has been done out along the tip of the blade. Okay, in terms of the, the turbine that we're designing and working on at the moment, this is the uh, a downwind turbine. You can see that we've reduced the diameter of the tower at this point. We've put in a pinnacle, which is a steel reinforced pinnacle, at that point to minimize the tower shadow. And we're covering that with a cowling, which is aerodynamically, aerodynamically designed to reduce the drag at that point and minimize the effect of the tower shadow. And so we're, we're rolling this out as a sort of a model that is trying to manufacture turbines as a commodity and, um, and use mass-produced components. So for example, we're using the multi-wing hub, which is an off-the-shelf item, and that allows us to have a variable pitch on the blade. And the blade we're using is an injection-molded blade, again, to, to keep the cost down, but computer-designed, and it's a particularly efficient blade design. We're designing it to be able to withstand 65 meters per second wind speeds, and we are using a downwind um, profile to maintain sort of directional stability and, and maintain output. And so far, the, the tests are proving very good. So this is where we're able to rotate the blade within the hub. We're using an axial flux generator, and this generator has two sets of magnets: one inside the outer casing. And so it's the outer body of the turbine that spins with the two sets of magnets spinning on either side of the coils. It's a very efficient setup and it's manufactured to extremely fine tolerances. Sorry, Quentin, was that uh, developed for this turbine in particular or is it a separate piece of technology? No, it's a separate piece of technology, but it was developed for wind turbines. Okay. Yeah, as an axial flux generator. So this is looking at it from the back and this is where the coils are mounted attached to the shaft and then the cables come up through the center of the shaft and then there's, there's an outer drum and an inner drum carrying the two magnets. One of the advantages of this type of turbine is that it's got no cogging. So normally a generator has this slight cogging effect that we saw downstairs when you turn it. There's no cogging in this. It's absolutely smooth startup, which enables it to start up in extremely low wind speeds. So when you combine that with a, an inverter that starts off at 50 volts, you're able to maximise your output at low wind speeds. That might just give enough electricity to keep the fridge going and keep a few, all the kind of things that are on standby in the house to come in and out occasionally. It won't generate a huge amount of power, but it actually, being able to get power at low wind speeds is, is quite a neat trick. And for those who really um, enjoy <coughs> long nights of sanding and varnishing and making your own turbine, I mean, this guy, Hugh Piggott, Really, I, I take my hat off to people who do this. I think it's brilliant. There's a guy up in Noma who's made a, a six kilowatt turbine using the system set out in this book. And basically, you manufacture the entire turbine. Um, he's got two versions of, of the, the sort of the, the standard package. One of them uses a brake drum off a of Ford Transit. The other one uses a disc brake off an Opel Corsa. You glue magnets on, you wind your own coils, and you build the whole generator, you carve the blades, and you, you make the whole generator from scrap and then you hang it on a piece of dairy pipe with, uh, with guy wires. And um, as you know, Mike has made one of these and it's about a 300 or 400 watt output and it's been running flying for the last uh, five, six years. Maybe 10, I would say. Think about 10 years. It. Yeah. yeah, no problem. So that's, um, that's a real sort of um, resilience. You know, if you can make wind turbines, you've got a, a real niche for yourself. So I, <coughs> I think that's great actually, and they're, they're great little machine. And, you know, it's great. it'd be great to see people doing this in their garage at night instead of collecting postage stamps. Hmm.